Raise your hand if you've ever gone through a difficult situation in your life. I think everybody, right? Unfortunately, sometimes when we go through difficulties, we try to pretend that it's not actually happening. We brush it to the side. We act like everything's okay. Our next speaker tried to do that. And she realized that at some point, you have to face your darkest moments head on. I'm very proud to introduce to you Miss Evelyn Espinosa. <laughs> So there are many different areas in my life that I can talk to you guys about. But the focus of tonight is the most recent chapter of my story. And that is learning to be human. You guys might be like, whoa, is she a robot? But no, that would be cool. It's more so touching base on how I was a very guarded woman. Growing up, I grew up in a Latino household. We didn't really learn about emotions, what they were, how to process them. The words I love you weren't very prevalent in our household. And I was also a very shy kid, so I didn't really hang around the kids my age. I always sat in the adult table, listening to their conversations, learning from them. And at a young age, I learned how humans can be very political in their actions, how easily one brother may betray the other, and how the words forever were only temporary. I remember my father always telling me, listen, escucha, learn from their mistakes and not your own. I took this saying to heart and began having a narrative view on my own life. I started watching over myself instead of actually being present in the moment, saying, oh, I already know this whole life, you know, I got a handle on it. But at the same time, I was still eight years old, still prepubescent, immature, not really having any experience for myself. I knew of how this world could hurt others, but I never really knew of how it could hurt me. So when I say I was a guarded woman, I don't mean it just happened overnight. It was more gradual. For example, when I was 14 years old, I met a boy in church camp. He said he liked me. I said I liked him too. However, he lived in LA and I lived in Oxnard, so our relationship solely lived on our phones. One day he texted me saying, I like your friend too. And I was just like, um, okay. And from that, it was almost like we were in a season finale of The Bachelors. And I remember. My friend and I were hunching over our phones in the church parking lot, just waiting. Who's he going to choose? Who's he going to choose? Then his answer came through. Drum roll, please. Dun, 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 dun. He chose her. And I just thought, ouch. That actually hurt. So from there, I went to my favorite place at the time, which was my mind. I analyzed it, thought about it, rationalized, and all of a sudden I thought, you know what? I don't deserve that. I don't deserve to be someone's second choice. That's never gonna happen to me again. That's how that wall was built. That wall that prohibited me from fighting for something that I could possibly love. Just like that, there were other incidents in my life, some smaller, some larger. But from there, it was just one wall here, one wall there, another one here, another one there, up until my heart was more fortified than Fort Knox. I was very numb to emotions, not really knowing when I was truly feeling something. I remember in high school, I would always be looking around at other people, judging them, saying, are you guys seriously crying over a broken heart, fussing over a lost friendship? I really thought I was above it all because I really thought I could control this emotion. I said, guys, there's bigger things to worry about in the world. However, last summer, an event occurred that caused me to rethink this mentality. So last summer, I was raped and 
by that time, I was so numb from emotions that I didn't even realize it. I didn't really process. I was okay like I always was. However, this time was just a bit different. This time, I could still hear a whisper of pain. And this whisper of pain pushed me far enough to have a conversation with my friend. I remember we were in Santa Monica Pier, sitting on a bench overlooking the ocean. I just brought it up casually, and I kind of just relayed the event that had occurred. And immediately, she's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? I said, confused, yeah, what do you mean? I'm always okay. She's like, no, 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 that doesn't sound right. And that was something that resonated within me throughout the weekend. And the combination of that whisper of pain and her words pushed me far enough to say, I want to get to the bottom of this. So by the time Monday rolled around, I woke up with a purpose in mind to get to the bottom. So I marched on over to the health center. You get free sessions here in the health center for therapy, guys, FYI. I walked in there. And I said, okay, I need you to settle this for me. I told her. She stayed silent for a second, just looking at me. And she said, yes. Yes, Evelyn. You were raped. I just nodded. I said, okay. You know, did what I usually did, rationalized it, thought about it. But then I went home. I was in my mom's closet. For some reason, I feel like that's my safe space. And I broke down. I broke down because I felt like I was finally OK to do that. With each, with, with each tear that I shed, relief and pain flooded within me. Relief because I was finally able to feel it, because someone else called out that emotion within me. I couldn't trust my own thoughts on it. So I went about one or two more sessions. And then after that, I was like, OK, I'm fine now. I don't need it no more. But that same day, I said, no, no. I don't know. And this indifference, I was still jolted from it. I thought, how is it possible to just be OK? It's just been a week and a half. Then I got to, I got to meditating. I thought of other events that occurred in my life. I realized how I always just shed a tear. Then I just swept it under the rug. Honestly, it was the only chore I ever did. So here I go on again, marching on over to the health center. I walk in there and I tell my therapist, I got another question for you. I ask her. So just because I'm not feeling this anymore, just because I feel as if I'm really OK, does it mean that I am? Once again, silently, she looked at me and said, no. Those emotions are still there. I was just so guarded that I never really realized all that turmoil I had within me. I would only look at my heart from the outside, from all those walls. I wouldn't really dare to peek behind them to see what was really there. But I just said, wow. I got to change this. So a couple months after that, I was working on bringing these walls down one by one, working past these issues. I finally got those skeletons out of the closet, had conversations with them, with them all. Many of them left. Few still remain. But through this journey, I realized that my strength didn't really lie in the ability to go through something and say, I'm OK. That didn't affect me. I came to realize that my strength lied in having the courage and bravery to say that I'm not OK. In having that ability to admit to myself and to others that I need help, that's what, was, what took the real courage. I came to the knowledge of what the power of vulnerability really was bringing these walls down and embracing and not being ashamed of my feelings, not trying to cower or just avoid them. I came to see the joy in them. And of course, emotions 
aren't really the best of things. Now I do fuss over a lost friendship. Now I do cry over a broken heart. It's not the best thing ever. But I also came to realize that in my pursuit of trying to control these emotions, it was never a whole bunch of different switches for me. It was in, I'm not gonna feel anger today. I'm not gonna feel sadness today. I'm not gonna feel pain today. It was actually just one switch, numb one, numb all. So I was able to rediscover the joy and everything and putting yourself out on the line again, not knowing what's really gonna happen, rediscovering the hopeful eight-year-old within me. And of course, I came to realize that life is never gonna be perfect, but that's only because it was never meant to be.